Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here in TNO, the last days of Europe in which we're playing as the Republic of Ireland. Now, this time with Converge Convergence. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead, but I believe for this one we're going to take McEntee's austerity and gain some public approval. We must tighten our belts. Rather than riskily trying ourselves to the economic whims of the OFN, the Sean McEntee has proposed a different approach. In the wake of the German Civil War and the flight of German investment out of our country, we cannot return to kowtowing to another economic bloc. We must return to De Valera's economic policy. A path of protectionism and self-sufficiency is the one we shall take. Untangling ourselves from the German web may prove difficult if we can achieve the Irish economy can stand on its own. A policy of protectionism will ensure our good will always has the edge over foreign goods. Though we may not see immediate <clears throat> economic growth, McEntee's proposal ensures IRA will have a strong, stable industrial base, which is good. But if you like to buy IRA terror, please go ahead. It is what it is. There's not really much we can really do about that, but that's okay. No, there's sometimes you just can't do, you can't help yourself and do things. So let's keep cutting down the debt, which would be very nice, and some improvement for guns. Yes, yes, yes. Better guns, please. Actually, we might want to go ahead and get some better land doctrine as well, but really want to focus on McEntee stuff. Now, with this right side here, if you like to read, I'll leave these on screen, these focuses on screen for you to read if you want. I've read through them at least once, so when we get there, actually, you know what? If you'd like to read them about right now, please go right ahead. So, RTE history broadcast, late, late show appearances, the president's visits, Ulster Goodwill tours, the Celtic Brotherhood, meet with the Jews. And then look to the past. And but I'll, also, if there's events, I'll let you read them as, as well if you'd like to. But a uh, family evening. Shush, Eon, the movie's starting now. Eon and Maggie Ward have been staying with the parents for the weekend as their parents went on a business trip together to Cork. They had an early dinner and had constructed a little theater in the backyard. Their grandfather had seen had been an entertainment producer in the 30s and 40s, working across the Atlantic with directors like Ors. Orson Welles and other famous figures. While his heyday was certainly over, he still had an old movie projector he had, that had been left at the film studio when the Germans had arrived in Ireland. It was only a few years old, or a few years after the war's end, when he went to check the studio. It had been largely abandoned and the projector was still there. He disabled it and loaded it into his car, bringing it back to their house where he would use it to show smuggled in films. Many of them would come from his old partners, who would come to Ireland for business trips, not before giving him a few quick reels of film. As the movie started, Maggie asked a question about the unfamiliar film, which was referred to as a Western, Who's Clint Eastwood? Okay, so, at the time of this recording, I've already done La Masse's side, which, if you actually watch that full video, you see the good, the bad, and the real bad, ugly parts of it. It is what it is. But, we can rewrite corruption. We have, we have a good amount of political power. We could probably do that. Corruption is kind of high. Might as well, right? Might as well. We don't like corruption here. And we're not passing a bill right now, which is kind of okay with us. So, yeah, it's possible. Oh, that's okay. The first chapter. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and keep spending, or spending and cutting. So, that'll be good. But, the first chapter. The first chapter of McEntee's plan involves outlining the base, and to set out what reforms and overhauls we need in our economy to enact this plan in these hard times. Great measures must be taken to bring our economy back in the right direction. The strong, hard-working should receive more benefits and rights, as our strong industrial base will be built on their backs. As well, we must take a look at the economic policies still in place from the 50s, and work to weed out policies that would work against our reimagining of the Irish economy. Loopholes that allow German corporations to grow so influential that their loss would crash our economy must be closed. If we are to bring the Irish economy into a new age, bring our workers new rights and better benefits, and sever ourselves from the German webs, we must succeed in all these goals and get more political power. McEntee's austerity, my friends. And less debt. Oh boy, how do I say this word? Tanishta Sean McEntee sat in his office inside the Leinster house, fidgeting with his cufflinks as his watch and his watch. He was scheduled to give a radio address regarding his plan for the economy in just a few moments, and he wasn't about to let his nerves get the better of him. No, now was the time for decisive action. His plan had been picked. It was now time to tell the world about it. Checking his wristwatch, uh, the Tau Nishta saw that it was time to begin. McEntee cleared his throat. People of Ireland began. Ireland stands before you today, a humble nation. The Emerald Isles, Harold, nearly cast down as the world falls to pieces. Many of our citizens are destitute. Savings accounts accumulated over years gone in an instant, and many of our most vulnerable have lost much more. McEntee paused, giving his words time to sink in, and yet, he continued, Ireland still stands. Though we may be bruised and battered, we have not fallen. My fellow countrymen, my friends, we have survived. The worst is over. Now it is time to look ahead. The Taunishta Lean forwards. All of Ireland's economic woes can be traced back to one point, the one figure, one nation, the Germans. The Germans took over all sectors of our economy, peddled their goods in our markets, and ran roughshod over our native population. Now, he said, pounding his fist on the podium, it's time for Ireland to take back what is hers. The Germans abandoned us. If they no longer want to maintain what they made in Ireland, then we can maintain it for them. 
The Republic will begin to repossess German assets that were abandoned during the crash, giving the wealth of the Emerald Island back to her people. My friends, Ireland's future is bright. And with a press of the button, the speech was concluded and Ireland's future was chosen. The wealth of Ireland belongs to the Irish, in which the government has prevailed in their little war. <laughs> less corruption? Sure, why not? We like people being less corrupt, right? And we want, we like more suppression of our enemies, right? I think so. And there goes Tricky Dick. Goodbye, Tricky Dick. Have a good time. Iberia gains control of, of Algeria. Very cool. And the first chapter. To the wicked go the spoils. Uh, let's see. Um, well, I've already read this before, so if you'd like to read this, please go right ahead. But she's going to love this. Cool. A strong and stable base. Eyes to the future. I kind of like that. Strong and stable base. For McAtee's reimagining of our economy to succeed, we must bring ourselves out of this economic crisis. To achieve this, to create a strong base for our economy to rise from, we must address the elephants in the room, those large German corporations that have been allowed to dominate our economy for too long. Iyer must no longer allow our economy to be at the whim of foreign interests, be they German or American, however. Chasing every foreign company out of Ireland isn't what we need either. In fact, we should make Ireland more enticing for foreign corporations to set up HQs. But we should always remember to put Irish needs first. For now, at least, our efforts should be focused on a recovery, or none of these goals will be achieved. All according to plan, let's see. Ooh, I think I've already read this before. So if you'd like to read this, please go right ahead. Sorry, I just had to make sure that what was going on. So, all according to plan. Cool, and the first chapter. Ooh, what do we have over here? Cool. And I see it has a better opinion of us. Uh, oh, there goes the South African War, managing the old giant. Well, there's not really much here. So there's no current bill that's going to be drafted. Uh, the Hospitals Federation Al Amalgamation Bill. Mergers, takeovers, and monopolies. All right. Well, let's do that after we get as much support as possible, so eyes to the future. Though we must learn from our mistakes in the past, we must not dwell too long on our history. Though we enjoyed some prosperity under the pack, swapping German masters for Americans in a vain attempt to bring back the 50s will not bring Ireland prosperity. We have to look to the future, where Ireland will be free from foreign economic control, where Ireland is a hub for foreign companies, but only as long as it brings more profit than foreign control. McEntee's plan brings sets uh, out a new path for Ireland. Rather than trying to achieve past glories, we set our eyes on an independent, prosperous Ireland. Honeymoon. If you like to read about this, please go right ahead. So, all these events, I mean, if they're unique and I've never read them before, I will probably go ahead and read them. But if not, then I'll just leave it up to you guys to read if you if you would like to. So. Cool, not bad. And even if we train our soldiers, yeah, I don't believe we can actually edit these guys, which is kind of stupid, in my opinion, but you know, whatever. Whatever. Root out corruption, you might as well. More friendly, that's good. And cut down some more debt. Well, GDP growth, not too good right now. Not too good. But that's not, it could be worse, I suppose. It could be much, much worse. And you know what, here and out, let's get some line doctrine. Strategic theorem, why not? More max entrenchments, very good. And just let time goes on. So after this, the system of the past, we have a new source of income? Sure, why not? With, in olden days, smaller countries could punch above their weight in the global economic ring through protectionism. Small nations would put their economic, economic, economic interests first, limiting imports and imposing tariffs, and engaging in free trade only if our internal economy could support it. We abandoned this policy with the rise of the pact, and we hedged our bets and let German corporations draw on our economy. Without this era of prosperity, with the German sphere would never end, never again will Ireland tie our economy to a foreign power, for economic empires rise and fall, but Ireland always survives. Through protectionism, we will always put Ireland first, but make space for foreign investment if and only if it benefits us more than them. Nice. Very nice. Cool. Raise all officer salaries. Sure, why not? We got enough PP for that, right? The agent and the trader. Leaky faucets will get the wrench if you'd like to do that. Please go right ahead. Nice. Paramilitaries. Well, they're focusing on the NIC. They're still. I mean, everyone's really weak. Well, I mean, these guys are weak, but these guys are non-existent. They're extremely angry, but whatever. Uh, if you'd like to do about that, please go right ahead. Cool. Keep cutting down that debt. Because we want to build, 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 build. Yeah, I don't. I I just don't like this. I don't like that we can can't edit our divisions. It seems like a barrier on us. I've said this before, but it seems like a barrier on us that uh that's just artificial. It feels like an artificial barrier on us, and I don't like that. I really don't like that. Cool, non-existent as it should be. And there's no bill in here, so just gonna keep reaping the rewards of a lot of PP. We got big PP here. Not a lot of manpower, but big PP. And actually, yeah, we can't even build other stuff. Ten is not very good, but. It's alright. Where we're headed, we'll do okay. Cool. 
So then after Ulster Goodwills, we'll probably do the one with the juice. I want to get as much approval as possible before we actually start putting or pushing through bills. So that's probably, in my opinion, the most important important thing to do. So, and I I always love getting that natural step. A small fellow, another weekend, another pound. Very cool. Ulster Goodwill tours. I know the situation is tense up here, Blaney. Just tell me if this constabulary has enough to keep order if things get worse. Honestly, Prime Minister, I don't think there'll be enough. Honestly, it seems like everyone up here hates you, either because you aren't protecting the Protestants or you aren't hurting them enough. There's just not a lot of goodwill up there. Ooh, I think I've already read this one before as well, so... Uh, yeah, if you want to read about this one again like normal, please go right ahead, so... Ah, uh, that's why. I've had re I read that one when I did Lamas, um, so... That was from that one. I thought it was from this side for some reason, so it is what it is. Oh, military house ready. Ooh. No, 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 no. Actually, if we stop boosting it up, we'd actually get more money, but, you know, whatever. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Whatever. So, with making another civvy, minus 482.62 becomes something else. Cool. People are killing each other. We love it. Minus 500. So, it's about uh, a little less $18 million added to this. The party. Oh, boy. Cool. There you go. And then Panic at the Stormont. And let's interview the DTDs. Can we please go? Of course we can. Less corruption, please. Which means we get... Ooh. Less oppression efficiency. Hmm. I don't like that a lot. Less than 700 billion. What the TD knew? Meet the Jews. Nice. We love the Jews. President's visit. Very nice. Uh, to Washington. We should follow him and see what he's up to. Very good. For Oslin. For, for Oslin. They're still weak, which is good. And, oh! Okay, so when I play as Lamas, Borman won. I'm meeting at the docks. There you go. But this time, Papa Goring won. Oh, that's not good. They're a little bit corrupt, and they like us. The fat man won. Look at that chin. Wow. And that turkey neck. Oh, baby boy. Oh, baby boy. A coup in Scotland, the... Light finally goes out, all right. Stay, stay with me, Lelaine, please. Please, please, please. Oh, what the heck? The game lags so hard sometimes, man. I swear. The mod lags. Boy, four lags, so. Nice. Get even more soft attack. Good, good, good. Planning the raid. Who was it? Who was it? Oh, I forget which one it was. Ooh. I think it was this one, right? Yeah. So I think it was that one, if I remember correctly. If not, I will do Fade and Fade Out, but whatever. Broadcast, Celtic Brotherhood, why not? Oh, and Repression? We love Repression here. Very weak, as they should be. Honestly, I don't... Ooh, anonymous tip, there you go. Yes, sir. Good, 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 good. But, uh, like, if they're... They're, they're weak. So it says they're very weak, right? For power. This has no influence on how strong an, a potential uprising will be, it seems like, so... Yeah, I don't know. I could be wrong about that, but it doesn't seem like it. Especially if everyone else is very weak. These are plans to take over Dublin. Oh boy. I like the pistol, though. It's a very nice pistol. Yeah, there you go. Less than 670. And we'll do... Uh, actually, you know what? Screw it. Let's just do one of these first. We'll do the mergers, takeovers, and monopolies built. Now, nah, we'll do this one first, and then I'll read about the other stuff. Cool. So let time go on first. Mergers, takeovers, and monopolies built. Vacation in the capital. There you go. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. A new bill that will address those German investment companies that remain in Ireland has been introduced by our party in the Dole. The mergers, takeovers, and monopolies bill. This bill will finally tackle the issue of remaining German corporations. If this bill passes, we will spin off the German companies into new Irish-based investment companies. This will allow us to preserve the economic value of these companies, but ensure that this value will go to Ireland instead. This will also open up many to many new employment opportunities for Irish workers. We expect the remaining German businessmen to firmly oppose the measure, but what can they do but complain to their dying fatherland? They'll probably come to Papa Goring and say, Hey, we want Ireland back. And I'd be like, Oh no. Oh no. Strategic theorem, good. Offensive, we'll go attrition planning just in case. Same weapons these guys. I mean, they're very weak, so they should have, like, no power, right? That's not how it works here for Ireland. Of course not. Of course not. So, let's go and try it. Alright, it's because we have so much PP anyway, so. Managing the old giant. So, that's not bad. Hardliners. Expand the police forces. Actually, how many do we have here? 20... Uh... Terrace won't like that. It doesn't really matter what they want. Can we raise... Can we cooperate with them a little bit more? What? Oh, no. They did nothing. 
It's 41%? Well, all right. More radical. Oh, you know what? Let's make it more radical. We lost one support, but we got enough PP. It doesn't really matter. Let's raise some officer salaries, because we can. Yeah, they're less corrupt, too. Efficiency is 4.9. Not bad. Can we make it even more radical? Here, let's do what? Oh, that's not good. Hmm. I like being radical. Eh, we're okay, though. It won't really be that bad if we don't do anything else. Anything else? Weapons? Nope. There you go. And now they're very weak still. Even weaker than before. Followed up with the Irish Hub. Well, let's do another one here first. Late, late show appearances. Good. And the Irish Hub. Though we wish to make the Irish economy self-sufficient, we can't ignore our special position in the global economy. With the collapse of the Einheits Pact, Ireland can take the position as a neutral, stable haven in Europe. Companies from American fast food. The Japanese electronics could find Ireland a suitable European hub, free from conflict or international entanglements. Taxes on foreign corporations that want to base themselves in Ireland should be lowered, and our government will begin an international outreach campaign that will paint Ireland as a great place to headquarter any company's European operations. Attracting foreign corporations will bring a great amount of wealth to our economy, bringing money we can invest into, our, into strengthening our economic base, and with a bill passing, a change for the better, or we hope so, we slightly empower the right wing, two more cities, and a little bit more debt. Not, big, not that big of an issue. And a little bit more terror. Oh well. Nice. <clears throat> At least we got the bill passed in happy 1965, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. And a great day. 62% of that power right wing is 82%. Wow, that's quite a bit. Quite a bit. Nice. At least we were successful from the front. Eh, I think it'd like us eventually, but we still need to do other stuff too, so. Late, late show appearances. And the Irish shop. And then we'll do some of that stuff over there. Oh, there you go. Do the Irish shop for not a good luck. If you'd like to hear about that, please go right ahead. Spend. Cut. Good. Oh, research. And I don't understand this. Like, why do we just join the Einheits pack first? That seems bugged. That really does seem bugged. That should not be happening. Because it happened when we played Lamas too, but we're back under the German fold. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. But, yeah, no. I'm sorry, man. I don't think it was LBJ, but still. Like, why? Why are we forced to? Especially when it plays Lamas. And right now, we want to be independent. So, this is kind of lore-breaking, I guess you could say. This is not very nice. It's, it's kind of like breaking the wall for us, and so it's like, what, what, why? Why? Why, man, why? There you go. And root out corruption. And they'll still like us hopefully a little bit more. But we'll see. 5.26 is pretty good, I'd say. Up next, we should be able to do some stuff down here. But let's go ahead and do... Um, look to the past. Why not? And then the Hospitals Federation's Amalgamation Bill. Oh! There goes Cornwall. The Irish hospital system needs addressing. As it currently stands, the healthcare system consumes a large amount of our budget while not satisfactorily addressing the needs of the Irish people. We have two choices. Either we cut our losses and reduce the budget, or try to improve the system at the cost of an increased budget. Reducing the healthcare budget would reintroduce money into our system that we could invest in building our industrial base, but it would greatly anger labor. Trying to f fix the system could lead us to pumping more money into something that might not be able to be saved, or it could perhaps bring world-class healthcare to our people. Cool. Start initialize the hospitals, federation, and amalgamation bill. And we've about a week left for that. It's not too bad. Oh, what do we have here? Raise your salaries. Yeah, they love us. They really love us. Oh, they're better. We're paying their salary, I think. I'm not. But the Irish people here are. And they love it. But look to the past for more stability and political power. Their power is non existent. So that should honestly directly influence how strong Northern Ireland is. And I could be correct about that. But it could also be very, very wrong. Um, more radical, maybe? There you go. I mean, we have enough PP. It doesn't even really matter to me too much. So, cooperativeness is 41%. They're quite cooperative. I mean, we are this faction, so what do you expect? 41%, and these guys are 52%. Bandage rain. Cool. Now they're at 58%. Can we cooperate with these guys a little bit more. We're at what? 61%? Not bad. Compromise? No. Encourage. There you go. We should be good. We have, I mean, 338 PP still, so that's pretty good, I'd say. Nice. Right, go and cut that. Almost half a billion. And then more rights for the worker. A happy worker is a productive worker. In recent times, their labors have been brought, bought, been outright miserable. They have suffered immensely from the exploitation enforced by their employers. Whilst the government has done little to help, the confidence of workers will have to be restored so that their morale is raised and their faith in our economy strengthened. 
Rights that were previously withheld will be introduced so that the people know that the government is on their side. We must hope that when the people are satisfied, so is the market and poverty get better and get some public approval. That's very good. De-radicalize the bill. We have 76. We are okay. Nice. And actually, let's see. We still have Sean Lamas here. Sean Francis Lamas, of course. No one else, huh? And then protectionism reborn. Protectionism it was once thought to be a dead economic policy, something that would be forgotten as the world became more connected and prosperous. Yet such a world has not come to pass, and with a better distrust that exists between the nations of the world, there is no better option for Ireland than to shut itself off. We will not need the intrusive intervention to help our economy grow. Ireland will make itself strong. And independent. Fully independent. There's a few bad apples there, but that's okay. The bill passes. Change for the better. Empower the right wing. Two more civvies. With private health care to public health care. More political power. Uh, monthly population. Stability. War support. More GDP costs. And better monthly poverty. Not bad. Not bad. Minus a little over, a little under 600 billion. Pretty good, I'd say. Protectionism reborn. Get more equipment. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, we got two done. Awesome, 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 awesome. Let's go and grab some of this more defense and organization. That'd be very good. But the Germans still rule. Despite the recent turn to protectionism, there is... Oh, there's a coup in England. Look at that. There's an unsettling reality that we will that will need to be addressed. The reality is a vast German presence that exists in our economy. They control a lot of power over our industry, and without them, the economic outlook for a country will be bleak. Removing all foreign interference from Ireland will prove much harder than first anticipated, but given the time, we can still hope that there will be a chance for us to pull away from the pact. We'll get some approval. Germany won't like us, but then again... We're forced to go with the Germans no matter what, which I strongly disagree with, which doesn't make sense to me, but whatever. It is what it is, I guess. Even though we fought against it. Alright, whatever. Oh, I still have a few bad apples, that's okay. Oh. There you go. Non existent. Protectionism, protectionism renewed. But the Germans still rule, unfortunately. But after this, the Industrial Grants Bill? Uh, let's see. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, we've got a lot of bills here. Um, actually, let's do this one. The Tariff Commission Bill. A new committee is to be introduced in order to oversee the changes to our tariff policy, which the government has has deemed necessary. They will introduce a new era of increased trade between the countries of Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, binding our economies closer together as well as distancing us from the German economic hegemon, which has done little short of pillaging our country over the course of our cooperation. The Tariff Commission will set our economy free and finally give it a chance to grow. The wealth Ireland will need to be strong in the coming years. Democracy returns to Italy, though. Wow, look at that. Good job, Italy. Good job. A little over half a billion. Hey, annual GDP growth, not too bad. Annual deficit, 600 billion. Dressler wins in Oslin. Things are, I'm going to say looking up, but they're coming along. All right, let's take a look what we got. Oh, we came back. Nice. This thing is back. Some approval, not bad. Can we build stuff in places? Um, How we, ooh, let's not do it up there. Let's do it up here. And now we need to build a factory in Derry. Derry. Oh, I want to build, oh boy, let's see, Derry. There you go. Build that one up first. There you go. Efficiency, max it out. A lot of presence. Good. Lower tariffs. Good. We don't We don't want to do that one. They have a very good uh, obligations towards us. And get a military factory too, because you can. Civvies. Oh, I eh, get two millies and civvies again. Why not? Request more funding? Of course. Of course. Get some more millies or civvies. Yes, please. Oh, we have a bill in here. Do we? Oh, we can make it more radical? Sure, why not? Hey, people like that. Um, Valeris, encourage. Yes, please. There you go. We're good. We have enough um, enough political power to do whatever we want now. So, and request funding. Sure, why not? And uh, ooh, package stamp becomes independent. Very good. Sixty percent approval rating. That's fine. That's fine. Doesn't really matter to me. Funding. Okay. Civvies. Nice. Oh, did you say funding? Okay. Why not? 60, 76 is still pretty good. Civvies? Oopsie. There you go. Nice. Nah, minus 700 billion. Million, I mean. Cool. Now we gotta wait for this bill to pass, though. So. Uh, the bill passes. It changed for the better, so we hope. Slightly empower the right wing. Replace the limited exports with export focus. So be it. Civvies. And then the industrial bill grants. Grants Bill. After our efforts to limit foreign comp competition are enforced, we will need to ensure that our industry makes the strongest expansion possible. Funds will therefore need to be provided to our local industries to help them grow and hopefully go on to enrich our people. We will ensure these enterprises are su successful so we can weaken our reliance on foreign imports so that Ireland can become a truly economic, independent nation. 
Very good. Civvies! Okay, you had a melee too. Why not? Did you say civvies? I know I did. Oh, this thing... No. Oh. Whatever project didn't... Going on, but I guess not, huh? Nice. Oh, we have a bill here too. Oh, uh, screw it. Just make it more radical then. There you go. Encourage it. And then you guys... Uh, concessions? We lose some more... But encourage it some more. Why not? There you go. We're looking pretty good. We got enough PP for it, so... Okay, civvies. You guys convinced me. More civvies are, are the future. We have 51 again. Not bad. Not as great as it was earlier in this campaign, but that's okay. Okay, why not? They're, everyone here. All the terrorist groups. We've defeated all the terrorist groups. Look at that. Oh, uh, we can do that too. Why not? Send weapons. There you go. They love us, and they're not corrupt. What could be better than that? The future of technology. While the rest of the world surges forward in the future, Ireland remains stuck in the past. Centuries of British rule have left us without industrial, with industrial underdevelopment as a norm. And even since independence, our industry and agriculture have lagged behind, lacking the necessary investment to bring them up to modern standards. Other countries are making great strides in computing, robotics, and increased mechanization. If a republic is to keep pace with our rivals, not only technologically, but economically, we need to focus on improving our own capabilities in such a manner. Very true. So not 66 quite yet. Yeah, let's grab some more land out attack. That'd be good. Cut that down. Looking better. Our GDP growth is 2.4, which is not bad. And we could request more funding, but we gotta wait for this stuff to finish first. And the bill passes. So, power the right wing. We always empower the right wing. More civvies and militaries. Nice job. Making loads of guns, even though it doesn't even matter what we do now. It's too bad. It just... I don't know. I wish it mattered more, but it doesn't. And we don't have that much money. A lot of corporation presence. The People's Revolutionary Council unifies Central Siberia. Very good job, guys. Very good job. Yeah, that won't even matter then. Dinner with the corporate members. Very nice. The Indonesian War, the Pacific Alight. Awesome. And let's go ahead and do the Third Amendment to the Constitution Bill. For the last 20 years, Ireland has been a client state of Germany in all but name. We, while we were technologically or technically an equal partner. De La Vera's government signed numerous military treaties and agreements with the Reichspact that left us firmly tied to the ship of German policy even after the last German troops left them themselves left Ireland. The proposed Third Amendment to the Constitution will cancel all such military agreements and treaties and ensure Ireland's neutrality as a constitutional principle. We should bear in mind, however, that even should the bill pass, these bold words will not have a big as an impact on our politics, as it might seem materially. The Germans will train much influence over us, and we will need to consider further measures. Pretty much. All right. What can we do here? De-radicalize it. Nah, we're kind of good. Uh, Hardlanders, there you go. Expand the police. We like the police. Uh, you guys, encourage them. Yeah, there we go. Nice. That's all we need to do. More drill secures Breton leadership. Good job. Uh, make it... There we go. Make it nice and safe. I mean, we've got so much political power now that uh, it really doesn't even matter, so... There's a few bad apples, but we can get rid of them. That's fine. There's nothing really down here, too, so they're all non-existent. Their power is non-existent, so they should be... Literally having no power, right? Right? We still have 77, which is nice. Oh, was there something else here? Funding, new taxes? No, not really. Victory for the Bolochi Nazionale. Cool. For Made in Ireland. Our people's confidence in the quality of our products need a boost, and what better way to do that than to proudly advertise their origins instead of hiding our light under a bushel? Every sticker, label, and packaging of everything that leaves a factory in Ireland will now bear a little marker with a tricolor flag on it. Made in Ireland. Not only will it serve as a guarantee of equality of our own population, who will be happy to realize just how much we produce ourselves, but it will mean that people all over the world will continue to associate Ireland with superior goods and bring more export profits our way. Win-win. Less than 400 billion, very good. And up next, Infrastructure Reserve, because we can. 77 votes, pretty nice. Pretty darn nice. The bill passes. Empower the right wing, stability and war support. Nice, I like that. I like that a lot. I like that a whole bunch. And then the emerald, uh, emerald shines bright. Ireland's vibrant green fields have given it the sobriquet Emerald Isle. But for the last 20 years, the sparkle in the emerald was dimmer than we'd like. Smeared and dirty under German economic domination and lacking the reforms necessary to bring tr transformation to our economy from the pre-mechanization agrarianism to the powerful... Uh, to the powerhouse we know it could be. The poetic name for a nation has never seemed less apt. No more. Our economic reforms are beginning to tell. And Irish economy is a powerful rising force. The emerald... Emeralds shining brilliance will be known all over the world. Great. IRA terror. Oh no, whatever will we do? I think we're done with this part now. Nice. 
And there you go. There. Yep. And what are they doing over here? Very weak. There you go. There you go. Made in Ireland. A frog in the pot. Oh boy. If you like about that, please go right ahead. The government is losing control of the situation. Hopefully we can get through the Emerald Shines right first. Oh boy. I don't want to come back in the, until this one gets done, so. Ah, right, here we go. Dinner. Privatize and sell. New taxes? No. Funding. 100% presence, and that's okay. Well, civvies, thank you. Because getting more military factories means nothing, because we don't really do much with it. Spend, cut, spend, cut. There you go, not bad. Because, actually, we can build more stuff, I guess, technically, but, I mean, it doesn't really matter too much. There you go, you can build some of that, get some anti tank. Uh, support equipment, motorized, I guess artillery as well. Yeah, I guess we could get more military factories, I suppose. And get some planes, maybe? Early fighters? Jet casts? There you go. Going out of two. We have enough millies for more. Let's grab some of this then. More of that, more of that, and more of that. There you go. Share the wealth. Civvies, millies, yes, please. Request more funding, yes. Civilian, yes. Millies, yes. Nationalize a corporation, didn't we technically kind of already? Eh, we didn't do that one technically yet, but still. Civvy, yes. Millies, yes. Emergency meeting, oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, funding. Yep, nothing there yet, and more military factories. We could use a few more of them, but really, let's get this one first, and grab this one, and then maybe grab some more casts. We'll see what happens. Um, I don't want to click on that one yet. I want to see if we can get this one done first. Nice. The emerald shines bright. Talnishta. Sean McEntee watched Sean Lamas yawn as he entered the boardroom, nursing a mug of what was presumably tea. He had some sympathy for the tea shop, as the meeting had been scheduled for an ungodly hour. Lynch, Lynch had promised good news, however, and... Uh, Ooh, the Taunishta uh, <clears throat> uh, was looking forward to seeing if his proposed economic plans had borne any fruit. I think we're all here now, the Tisha quipped. What have you got for us, Jack? Well, Mr. Tisha, the, the Minister for Finance replied, things seem to be going our way. Production numbers are up, faith in the economy is at its highest point since the crash, and all of our projections keep pointing that way. People are beginning to invest in Ireland again, and even the people outside the country are starting to take interest again. It was all that the uh, Taunishta could not could do not to cheer. This was better than McEntee had hoped. How are the Germans taking a re reposition efforts, he asked. Well, Lynch replied, they haven't really said much. As we predicted, the Germans have bigger issues than some seas factories than they aren't even in any seat to use. Your average German probably cares very little about Ireland, but your average Irishman cares very much about it indeed. About it indeed. Lamas sighed, slumping forward in his seat. At least something is finally going as planned. It's just been one thing after another recently. It's good to get some good news for a change. Lynch nodded. Oh, there's one other thing. A new logo for the economy, he said, taking a pair of papers out of his briefcase and sliding them towards the two men. It depicted a green emerald, standing upright in an, on a grassy field. The sun shone, the sun shone directly upon it, illuminating it in, it in its brilliance. It's supposed to represent Ireland's new independent economic future, he said. Fitting, McEntee replied, smiling at the picture. They call it the Irish... Emerald. Right now, we have the hidden answer on screen, so if you like to read this, please go right ahead. This test tells us about the story with the whole, you know, organization, the terrorist organizations here, but time to ask Kelly some hard questions, because right now, technically, we're done with McEntee's, you know, part of the focus tree, so now we got to wait until, oh, well, the whole thing with the IRA or the, you know, the UV... F and the ICG go on, but if you'd like to read about visiting a friend, please go right ahead. We must secure Dublin immediately, in which there's not a lot of corruption here. And of course, they love us. The NSC loves us so much, even though we might not love them, but oh well. And revisitation. Alright, ooh. Oh, let's see, and for this one, go to the warehouse, cool. The officers were guarding the warehouse with firearms. If you'd like to read this, please go right ahead as well. Let's ask them ourselves. And... What's up next? Oh, what's their spending? What's their... Ooh, not bad. No less than a billion? Well, less than a billion, but that's not too bad. 241 million in national debt is something I would be very envious of any country to have at a modern day, but detention without charges. <clears throat> that was all Lamas needed. Uh, if you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. I've already read this once when I played as Lamas and joined, trying to join the LFN, so all right, you have the green light on this. Inspector. Cool. And we'll see what happens. IRA terror. It's unfortunate. Not really great. We don't have... Oh, the left wing is virally disempowered. Wow. Oh, uh, dinner with corporate members. We love dinner with corporate members. We love, 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 love to have it. But the bash. What else are we going to find in this house? Very cool. There you go. If you'd like to do that, please go right ahead. As we're going to let time go on just a little bit more and root out some more corruption. There is no corruption here in Ireland. 
Nearly non-existent. Ah, night vision. Very jolly good. Jolly, jolly good. Let's get some more defensive breakthrough. That'd be very, very nice. Oh, come on. Can we cut down the debt to zero? Please let us cut down the debt to zero. And working through the haze. And there you go if you'd like to read that. There you go. And which... Follow the money. Follow the money. Follow it up. There should be another event very soon. And uh, I wish we could edit these divisions like, like I said earlier, but... Throwing the book, we merely needed your attention away from Belfast. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. And which things are going to panic, and we'll probably get a new Focus Street very, very soon. And Oscar and I did go grab a cup of coffee, just to make it a little warmer for myself. The fate of the Special Zone. If I were T-Shock, I would do what? If you'd like to read about the fate of the Special Zone, please go right ahead. Snatch up the IRA, new VF leadership, and force a compromise. Well, so when I play as Lamas, we put a bullet in Tuomi's skull before he outwits us again. Declare martial law. Um, because we're going, like, try to be as independent as possible, let's go ahead. Declare martial law versus snatch up the IRA and UVF. Because I've already done this one. And force a compromise. I think next time we'll force a compromise, but let's see the army's advice and declare martial law on the northern counties. Let's try that. The battle for Italy. Well, who cares about Italy when the northern Irish counties are having problems right now? And with 45% approval, only a million dollars. I wonder. That's not too bad. 74 factories is not too bad, I'd say. Hey, almost less $100 million in debt. Military government. Oh. Let's just take in care of Yes, that would be good. Uh, if you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. He sighed again. Um, let's see. Did I read this one? I'm pretty sure I read this one, so. Cool. In which the general staff's plan. Whatever plan we had originally chosen, it was going to end up a disaster. Whether it be planning or some other issue that was out of our control, the plan was doomed to fail. After much time and discussion, we decided to go with the military. Unlike the civilian methods, this plan depends on the military following orders at the utmost authority inside Ulster. The plan takes notes from the tactics and plans of German tactics that will certainly repress this rebellion. Which is weird that we, we are building up a lot of political power because we have no focus, but... Oh well. The new emergency. The first part of the general staff plan is to announce a new emergency from a government detailing our actions and upcoming motives in the Ulster Crisis. We plan to release this memo as soon as possible to alert the IF IDF and agents we have ingrained inside the many paramilitary groups that inhabit Ulster. Once we announce this, we should begin to move the IDF soldiers that have been ordered to garrison the border to move into Ulster and begin enforcing martial law in the country. While we shall certainly catch fire for some of our more liberal members in the uh, Directus and Army due to personal liberty infringements, we must ignore them and continue. We lose some popularity of authoritarian democracy and get more stability, though. Exercise Armageddon. Sean Lamas looked at the group that had been assembled in front of him. All members of the General Staff of Ireland. He knew all of them by name and definitely knew why they had come to him. All looked identical in Irish military uniform, looking very German, thought Lamas. <clears throat> what brings you gentlemen to my office? He looked around the room before answering his own question. I assume it has to do with the current situation in Ireland? He asked the men without looking up from the papers. The past few months have been nothing more than a crap show for the government. Between the riots and bombings, Ulster was primed to be exploding at any moment. Well, you guessed right, Lamas, said the recently promoted Brigadier General Kelly. He had a bit of a smile at the corner of his mouth. After talks between myself, McEwen, and the rest of the general staff, we decided on a new plan that will end this crisis once and for all. He gives a folder of papers to Lamas, who opens them and reads them before recoiling. What in the bloody heck is this, said Lamas, clearly angered at what he was reading. Operation Armageddon, executive powers, mass reprisals? Do you have any bad word idea how fragile this whole situation is, Kelly? Uh, Lamas wanted an answer as his blood began to boil. Who the heck did these Muppets think they are, walking into his office and giving him the most bollocks plan? Well, these would only occur if we would really need to use them, for the most part. We are just acting as a sweeping force to replace the NIC and talk over. Finished Kelly. Lamas looked up at him, nodding. Kelly sighed a brief of relief. He hasn't been exposed yet. So, is it approved? Dismantle NIC. German methods. Uh, planning speed, less stability. As we now control over Ulster and the zone, we can begin to use our own po police force that we have in Ireland. Around 47% of the officers who signed on to the plan and the mission to bring peace to Ulster have been trained in Germany by Wehrmacht and Ordnungspolizei instructors as part of the Einheitspact exercise. After they had come back, the methods they had m learned had made the Garda quite the force to be reckoned with, however, and it is still not adopted by the whole Garda. Now that we are in control, we can begin to train the other 53% who didn't receive training to be trained. If these methods work as well as they did in Germany, then we will all be set. Um, oh, we're in the... Uh, I don't really want to join, but whatever, that's fine. I guess we're fighting Poland now, guys. More max planning, that's fine with us. And there's not really much else we can do here. Which is whatever. Cool. And the new emergency. German methods, my friends. Special measures. Captain Patrick McCulloch 
Oh, that's really laggy. And his platoon marched outside, alongside their eye of thieves as they made their way through the streets of Belfast. Their orders were to move into the volatile special zone and force martial law on the populace, in order that he was incredibly happy to be complying with in the first place. He had no real sympathy for the Protestant and Communist agitators that were the cause of all this madness in the first place. Yet he felt for the innocent people of Ulster that had been swept up in everything from day one. They didn't deserve this, he thought. Rounding a corner, the platoon came across a large mob of people riding in the streets. The captain could see what remained of the peaceful protest that the riot had grown from. Cardboard signs demanding accountability from Dublin and the immediate removal of the NIC from Ulster. This is the Ireland Defence Forces, the captain said into the megaphone. The NCSC is now under martial law. Disperse now and return to your homes or you'll be arrested. The declaration didn't have the calming effect that the captain had hoped for. Several of the riders picked up empty bottles and debris off the ground and began throwing at them at the assembled soldiers. Get out of Ulster, you fascist pigs, one particularly brave rider shouted. McCulloch shook his head, and it seemed force would be necessary once again. Giving an order, a water cannon fired from the tops of the IFEs into the crowd. The crowd fled in a fit of terror, trampling those unable to move fast enough, and soldiers moved in to arrest the stragglers. This is Alpha Team. We've sent the riders up back towards the town hall, he reported to his radio. You should be able to cut them off there. Good copy, the radio spat out in a hiss of static. Keep up the good work, Alpha. Out. McCulloch shook his head. It was going to be a long night. They'd found Otelli, 343 arrested, 11 deceased. Nice. Let's get some dinner. Let's grab some dinner, guys. And get some more funding. And then uh, get some more civvies. Why not? Cool. Actually, how's this looking? Not bad. And then, after German methods, the Irish Gestapo. We've had to we've had to begin to receive reports from the Garda units who have been operating within Ulster. For the most part, the Garda's methods have worked quite well. Crime has dropped quite a bit, and the margin being certainly larger than it was when the NIC had been police force for Ulster. Now that we've seen the true results of these methods, we can begin to take some of the more veteran officers and bring them to military intelligence to train them. It will certainly take some time to train our generals, but the result will certainly be worth it in the end. Extracting information. Officer Ian Flynn of the Garda felt uncomfortable sitting in a too-hot conference room in the precinct building in Belfast. He'd been selected by his captain to attend a seminar on extracting information from a suspect. A discipline that Flynn was quickly coming to learn was a little more than a fancy way of saying torture. Denailing, said the instructor in a much too excited zone, is a particularly effective form of torture that has been used for centuries. The instructor, a fellow named Hans Friedrich, spoke with a strong German accent and was rumored to have once been a part of the ARPO back in Germania. Given the man's sadistic nature, Flynn was inclined to believe those rumors, though he doubted that the man ever left. And it is easy too, the man continued. Producing a penknife from his back pocket, all you have to do is simply slide the knife underneath the snail and then pop. There was a collective indraw breath as the instructor mimed or the fingernail coming off in one smooth notion. Flynn felt a bit sick himself, a sentiment that many in the room seemed to be sharing. A few of the officers in the conference were not sharing the same sentiment, instead enraptured in the display of cruelty being presented to them. One of the officers in the group raised his hand to ask a question. Why just a finger now? Why not the entire finger? Surely getting rid of the finger hurts more, he said. Or he asked. A good question, replied the instructor cheerfully. The area around the top of the finger and the nail itself are extremely sensitive. Have you ever had a paper cut? It is painful in the same way, though I am told it is much worse. Also, you get more chances with just the nail. Nails grow back and fingers and toes. Probably do not. An officer towards the back got up and all but ran out, his face green. <laughs> Flynn held his head in his hands. It would be a long seminar. Now, onto the psychological methods. Jesus Christ. Hmm. You gotta love effective methods. All right, paramilitaries. Um, I mean, this really means nothing. I mean, now they're all non-existent, so they shouldn't have any power here, right? Right? Just in case they rise up. I mean, we're looking not too bad. We could use a little bit more anti-tank, I suppose, but still. Fighters, some more artillery, tons more casts. Why not? With all the fun in the world. Ooh, now let's not cut down military sturdy just in case, because I made that mistake when I played with the OFN path. So that was kind of my fault, but not really, because I don't like how this is all set up, but it is what it is. There you go. More civvies? Eh, whatever. Uh, we need more funding. There you go. How about a uh, civvy and a milli? How about more funding? And then a uh, civvy and a milli. Reforming intel military intelligence. 20 Woolwood Street, apartment 46, were where the orders had directed him. It was a large apartment complex near the center of the city, though somewhat run down in the dilapidated state of the hallways were anything to go by. Lieutenant James O'Malley led a small team, just four other officers of the Irish military intelligence, down the hall searching for the apartment in question. They'd received an anonymous tip from a neighbor that the occupants of the apartment 46 of the Fleming family were secretly UVF sympathizers and were supposedly plotting some kind of attack. Whether or not the allegations were true wasn't relevant. It was a political th potential threat and will be dealt with accordingly. Coming up to the correct apartment, O'Malley kicked in the door, the tremendous crash causing the family at the table to jerk up from their grace in alarm, fearing, fear writ, clearly written across their face. James Fleming, O'Malley intoned, military intelligence, you'll be coming with us. Fleming stood up with indignant rage, who are you up to, who put you up to this, he all but shouted, was it that bad word a-hole O'Donovan? 
He began shouting as if talking to someone on the other side of the wall. Just because I'm a Protestant doesn't mean I'm a terrorist, O'Donovan. Just. <clears throat> One, uh, my apologies. One of the other officers stepped up, decking the man in the stomach, causing him to fall over in pain. Two other officers picked him up off the floor, putting him in handcuffs. Who reported you as irrelevant? I suggest that you come quietly, if not for the sake, then that of your family, O'Malley said. His eyes flicked over to the woman and the child, still huddling at the table, the woman visibly pregnant. Take him too, he ordered. No, Fleming shouted, straining desperately against his bonds. Leave them alone. They've got nothing to do with anything. You can't do this. O'Malley leaned in, his face impassive. Oh, he said, but I believe we can. Dismantle the NIC. The North Irish Constabulary has been long stood as the government's mandated police force for Ulster and the surrounding county. While they have served us well, it is becoming apparent of late that they are not trustworthy. Rumors have been flying up out of the NIC reportedly saying that Protestant sympathizers have been working with from within to bring down the Constabulary and bring down Ulster with it. Along with this, we have seen a rise in communist sympathies in these ranks and with members proudly supporting communist regimes. It has become time to officially dismantle the gentle hand of the NIC and replace it with a much more well-meaning hand of the IDF. And get some coffee here too. But we must purge infiltrators. We've begun to receive more tips that are even more than fifth colonists that have infiltrated the army. We've begun to systematically eradicate this disease that has infiltrated the army, and after we've purged and dismantled the NIC, more reports have been flooding in from all over. We have to also begin to discuss the developments of the aftermath of the NIC and how we will have seen a boost in recruitment by many sympathetic Ulsterians. However, the vetting process has revealed time and time again that many of them are attempting to strike us down from the inside. Oh boy. Oh boy. Military spending. Oh, look at that! Less than seven billion in debt. I wish someone could say that in real life. But the fifth columnists. The eyes of the beleaguered NIC officers were filled with hope as Major Sean O'Donnell and his platoon walked into the Constabulary's headquarters. The building had been under a slight siege for the past few days. A siege had been easily dispatched when an armored column rolled up to the building. O'Donnell couldn't help but feel the slightest twings or twinges of guilt as he made his way to the commissioner's office, though it was overshadowed by iron determination to follow out his orders to the letter. The commissioner barely looked up from the papers strewn across his desk at the major's entry. Ah, good, he said. Shuffling papers around, you must be the relief I looked I asked for. Took you fellows long enough. Actually, that's not what we're here for, O'Donnell interrupted. Handing the commis commissioner a letter, I have orders for you here. Unsealing the envelope, the commissioner's face turned several shades of red as he skimmed the contents of the letter. The NIC dismantled all files seized, he spidered. What is the meaning of this? Why wasn't I informed of this sooner? Simply put, the major responded, the military no longer trusts the constabulary to serve the best interests of the Republic at this time. Have you been given advance notice, you may have destroyed or hidden crucial information that you don't want the military to see. The major glared at the commissioner, the man flinching from his gaze, the NIC is a loose end, and the IDF wants a tie. The commissioner steeled himself for one final retort before deflating a defeat. What do you require from me, major, he asked feebly. Only your complete cooperation, the major replied. Oh, look at that, the preacher's last sermon. Uh, ex exercising limb to save a nation. Cool. Meetings of the Free Presbyterian Church of Ulster were forbidden, which didn't mean they had stopped happening. Taking the podium as usual, Ian Paisley uh, received thunderous applause when he rallied against Papist oppression, against a savage martial law, and against all those who committed spiritual fornication and adultery with the Antichrist, though through their conversion to Catholicism. Adrenaline racing through his veins, he prepared to give the sermon a coup de grace by finishing off with an enunciation of sodomy, but was interrupted by the sound of gunfire. Quite often, the ICG or the IRA would try to interrupt his meetings, and that wasn't new. Then the UVF men surrounded the church, usually took care of them after a short skirmish, nevertheless. With the gunfire getting louder and louder, Paisley decided not to extend the sermon further, no point in risking his own people. When he stood down from the pulpit to oversee the safe vacation of the church, Paisley heard the faintest hint of another noise, a hum. Paying no attention to it, he encouraged all those present to return to their homes in an orderly fashion, while the hum as well as the gunfire kept growing louder. While Paisley was hurriedly hurrying the churchgoers along, the hum broke through the walls, revealing itself as a deafening engine noise of an armored car. Taken aback, Paisley looked in horror as it punched a hole in the church at full speed, overrunning several pews. This wasn't IRA harassment. The Dublinites had come after him again. They could even spot the great figures of distant IDF men through the massive gap the tank had created. His imminent arrest, Paisley believed, would galvanize a Protestant population into rebellion. He could still leave from prison. He'd done it before. When the Sonderkraftsarzungs tur turned in his direction, however, it dawned on Paisley that the Papists had something different in his mind, or different in mind this time. Directive 1, the following individuals will be shot on sight. Oh boy, but then Armageddon. And the New Testament, the day of Armageddon is a war of biblical proportions. It can also refer to the end of times. While we may not be starting another world war, ending of days, this will be the culmination of all our plans coming to fruition. Codename Exercise, Armageddon. This is one of our largest operations so far. The Guard has done great work in Ulster with their new training methods and interrogation techniques. Since we've implemented the new tactics, terror tactics have dropped massively. Now that we've been we're prepared enough, we can give Colonel James Kelly full control of the NCSE. Gone in 60 seconds. Since NSE was purged a few weeks earlier, Sean 
Oceanus, Orsinus, Ptolemy lost his principal. Oop, my bad. Uh, a source of information. Truth was that, far from being one step ahead, he was often told of the Irish government's plans by his own police force. Now, he had to scrape off all the leaks he could from the radio transmissions and murmurs. One of the most reliable sources, he, they had tipped him off about the impending raid on his hideout just in time to skip aboard an inconspicuous Austin Cambridge. Looking out into the night sky, Tuomi noticed the occasional fire protruding from Belfast neighborhoods, thematically accompanied by regular intervals of sirens. The government had somehow managed to launch a crackdown and large enough to destroy much of the organization. All the years of backbreaking work that it took to assemble arsenals to build connections gone. The only possible explanation was that his plans had somehow been leaked, however, was responsible for it, he'd shoot personally. So there's a checkpoint up ahead, Tuomi dreaded the words of his driver, as he noticed the IDF truck which blocked the intersection 100 meters away. Bracing himself for the inevitable, Tuomi clenched his fist before addressing the man on the front seat. Drive. With the Cambridge approaching the checkpoint at full speed, a hail of gunfire showered them. While well, the window was shattered and the infernal ricochet of F and LAG rounds in the bonnet was both terrifying, the bullets seemed to have evaded them for a few moments. This looked proof fleeting, however, as one projectile found its mark in the driver's forehead. The Cambridge veered out of the control and then rolled over. While shaken from the crash, Tuomi could still smell a smell of leaking petrol and then of bursting petrol. Inside the burning death trap, Tuomi was consumed with rage, not because of his impending asphyxiation, but because he couldn't help but his last thoughts being of Ian Paisley. Hope that prod dude didn't outlive me. Oh boy. And Armageddon. Let's see what happens with Armageddon. And request more funding. Civvies? Millies? Yes, please. Millies? Sure, why not. Civvies? Sure, why not. Request funding? Yes, why not. That should be enough military factories for us now, right? We should have enough casts. Oh! Well, yeah, South Africa's just falling apart, guys. Don in Belfast, Brigadier General James Kelly, stood at the head in a hastily constructed podium in front of the Stormont building in Belfast, hands clasped behind his back. Behind him, a regiment of soldiers searched the Parliament building, arresting resisting TDs and escorting them out of the building. In front of him stood a crowd of reporters that had been summoned to listen to an announcement from the Irish Defence Force occupying the city. Kelly cleared his throat. Speaking into the ray of microphones in front of him, citizens of, Ul uh, citizens of Ulster, he declared to the flashing of cameras and the clicking of shutters, today is a stormant building of Northern County Special Zone is officially disbanded. Murmurs of shock and dismay filtered through the crowd at the announcement, and the Brigadier General had to raise his voice to be heard. Going forward, the County of Ulster will now operate under martial law for an indefinite period of time, he said, a hush falling over the crowd. As we speak, IDF soldiers are carrying out a number of raids across the NCSE on the paramilitaries that are infesting our homes. At this time, I can also confirm the deaths of paramilitary leaders Ian Paisley and Seamus Twomey, the heads of the Ulster Volunteer Force and the IRA, respectively. The martial law is for your own safety, as we expect that the worst is yet to come. In the distance, there was a loud explosion, setting off the alarms of a number of cars in the city below. A detachment of the regiment rushed past the near panic crowd of reporters. Spread a gunfire picked up as the city of Belfast turned once more into a war zone. As you can see, Kelly Grimace, the IDF has everything under control. There will be no questions, return to your homes. And put Blaney on trial. Exercise Armageddon would work like a charm. The zones seem to be fully pacified, especially after the arms crisis. However, there are still many loose ends, many of them all coming back to one man, the who's the whole ringleader of this utter disaster, Neil Blaney. Over the past month, we have been preparing to fully remove him from power. A few weeks ago, we finally completed this by arresting him on charges, charges of treason. As we dragged him out of the building, James Kelly arrived at the field of void. This move has certainly angered brass within the IDF, but they need to remember something. This is still a democracy. At least for now. Nice. Dinner? Oh, no, no, no. I want to show, please. Thank you. New taxes? No, no, no. Dinner. Oh, and I guess the terrorist organization is kind of gone. Good. 1.79 billion. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, 1.84 billion. Nice. End of the line. Sean Lamas. Alone in his office, poring over the paperwork about the evidence for Blaney's upcoming trial, he had never finished his law degree because of the War of Independence. But he knew it was a solid case when he saw one. However, solid may not be enough. The case had to be absolutely watertight to ensure his success. He heard someone open the door and replied, Oh, one moment. I'm busy preparing for the trial, he told his visitor. Oh, there won't be a trial. Lamas looked up to see General McCowan and Colonel uh, McKelly standing in front of his desk, hands rusting on their sidearms. His heart immediately sank, knowing full well where this was going. Sean Francis Lamas, you are under arrest for corruption and high treason against the Republic of Ireland and her people. Please come quietly. At least can you tell me which poor dude you're putting in my place? You'll find out soon enough. The despotism party will now be called the Junta. No more our ancient sire land shall shelter the despot or the uh, slave. The military and Neil Blaney have overtaken Ireland. Wow. Well, Neil Blaney, hello. 
I followed up with Regime of the Brigadiers. Now that we've ex exercised control of Ulster and given Blaney more power, we can use him as a puppet. In the past, our government was a bureaucratic mess that had caused more issues than it had solved due to a piss poor leader in Sean Lamas. Kelly has begun to take more power away from the government and directing it towards us. Now that we can exert our control by using McCowan, we can begin to run the country our way, one that is much more continental, one that is much more willing to work with the wider Einheit's Pact. The people of Ireland may worry that the end of days is coming that the Germans are invading. However, they will not fear what comes next if they follow our orders. Well, so much for choosing who we wanted, which route we wanted to go down. Minus one billion is actually still pretty good, though. Um, yeah, not bad. Regime of the Brigadiers. Setting that record straight, the majority of the faces that filled that dull chamber were unfamiliar. Neil Blaney thought. The man looked around the chamber. They were a handful of faces that he remembered from his hardliners, but they were in a minority. No, the faces that he saw were now were those of yes-men and sycophants, put in place by the full of Moss to bring a swift and decisive end to the northern conflict. Yes, Operation Armageddon had been a massive success, not just in a way that all the Taoiseach had thought. The partisans had been crushed, the North secured, and Blaney had been maneuvered into power. Now that he began his ultimate goal, the greater cooperation with the Reich. Uh, Taunishta. Dol of the Republic of Ireland began, addressing the chamber, I stand before you today triumphant. The nation today stands strong. Ireland's enemies are driven before, and we stand victorious. Blaney paused as the chamber applauded him. Now, Ireland stands ready to enter a new phase of her life, one returning to the Einheit's Pact as full and equal members. There were some murmurs in the chamber at that, and Blaney made sure to note dissenters. They would be either removed or reminded of their loyalties. Just think of the prosperity shared between Ireland and Germany before the crash and the depression, Blaney said, arms out in a sweeping gesture. Ireland grew into an economy that rivaled those of the world powers, and to think of what happened with the Germans left. Ireland fell. Lamas brought us down. Now I plan to bring us up and back under the world stage to make Ireland once again the envy of the world. The Germans and the IDF will keep our great republic safe and secure. My friends, my people, today is a great day for the Republic of Ireland. It was a speech for Ireland. It was a speech for her people. It was a speech for the Germans. It was a speech for the world. And it was met with thunderous applause. Brigadiers coup the Republic of Ireland. Uh, Sean Lamas, once Taoiseach of the Republic of Ireland, has been ousted in a coup d'état. Preceding the trial of T.D. Neil Blainley, leader of the hardliner faction within uh, Fina Fal, a faction of the Irish Defense Forces led by Generals James Kelly and Sean McCowan, uh, McCowan, 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 I'm saying his name wrong, stormed the former Taoiseach's office, arresting him for high treason against the Republic and anointed the hardliner leader of the new Taoiseach of Lamas' place. The new regime is said to be extremely germophilic and will likely be seeking greater integration into the High Heights Pact in the coming days. Officials in Germania are reportedly ecstatic at the news and will likely welcome the new government into the pact with open arms. International observers have condemned the new government, stating concerns of visible repression and new restrictions on common liberties. Ireland picks her side of history, and that is the end of this part of the content for Ireland. So, we started off trying to be independent, and we went down a certain way for the, you know, the terrorist group, and then we just joined the, you know, the German pact, which, I don't know, that seems a little iffy to me personally that doesn't seem like it would make a lot of sense for us to do that but whatever i guess our choices mean nothing in the end except for when, what we do with ira and the terrorist work group but hey if you enjoyed the video leave a like subscribe if you're new check out my discord link in the description below james kelly looks really worried and i'll see you tomorrow in another video thanks for watching have a great rest of your day